Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Oh, Lord, I can find you. There's a future if we can speak the same language. Oh, Lord, I want to find you for this moment. We can get it around. Oh, Lord, I can find you. There's a future if we can speak the same language. Oh, Lord, I want to find you for this moment. We can get it around tonight. Hi, welcome to today's episode. Of serving locally. We are here today with Keely Beck of Keely Beck Doula and Postpartum Services. So we'll just get started with who are you and what is your organization and just a quick little overview. So I'm Keely. I'm a birth and postpartum doula. Um, I started my doula business out of just an observance of a need for affordable and accessible uh, doula care for moms. I started with a hospital birth with just my mom during COVID and ended up not having my dream birth and was not satisfied, went through a lot of postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, breastfeeding issues, and everything was just really rough. And I had a hard time connecting with motherhood. So it led me to a very big deep dive into how can I make this better if I want to have more kids and how can I help other people not experience this because so many people said that that was their same experience Mm -hmm. so I found doulas and I was like whoa that's kind of cool so I started with that started doing my research and schooling education on it and ended up pregnant with my second had a wonderful doula, went through a birth center, had a midwifery care for it, and had, like, my dream birth. I gave birth in a bougie hospital, not really hospital even, like a bougie hotel room right? in a bathtub, like, dreams. And my postpartum experience with my doula was amazing. And I didn't go through the depression. I had amazing breastfeeding journey. I just was happy in motherhood now finally so I kept pursuing and now I am just trying to get the word out and get more affordable doula care to other moms and doing birth classes at a really low cost to parents and families so that everybody can get it not just the people who can afford 300 plus dollars for a birth class right (laughs) so yeah Great. Um, <clears throat> can you give us a little bit of background? Well, you just did. Um, <laughs> but if there's more, did you want like to add? So um, how many, I'll, I'll say it this way. How many years have you um, been a doula? I've been just over a year now. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been wanting to for three years. So yeah, and over the year, I've attended two home births and three hospital births and every time the home births are a very physiological natural undisturbed not a lot of management letting the moms do their thing and trust in their bodies and then you go to the hospitals and it's a lot of things are being done to you even with a doula by your side it can mitigate those issues of things being done and it absolutely helps a lot more rather than the hospital in my experience telling me I don't know why you wouldn't have gotten an epidural beforehand pushing interventions not really giving any actual information or risks of what interventions they're giving you Mm. in the hospital is a really big thing so with my doula services I focus a lot on the education before labor, giving you all of the interventions that they could possibly throw your way and letting you make the ultimate decision before you even get to the hospital what you are comfortable with. And what options there yes. are. Yeah. Just education on what does that mean? Because yes. when you're in the throes of labor, yes. what does that mean? <laughs> and you don't 
want to just have to be learning things as you're in labor going like through worst. it. You're like, <laughs> just make the decision for me then, I right. guess. Whereas if you go in beforehand and you know the risks, you know what's coming, you can kind of say, no, but I'd rather do this instead. And it kind of just helps everybody have a better experience. And your hospital staff is ultimately only with you for about 10 to 15 percent of your labor mm -hmm. whereas your doula is there a hundred percent of the time they won't miss things that the hospital staff could miss because they just see what's on the screen mm -hmm. they're not interacting so it's more personable just creating a more peaceful and personable experience around birth and letting women be in charge of themselves that's what we're realizing is a big issue mm. in the world is people aren't letting women take the charge and have their own voices in the most vulnerable part of their whole life. Mm -hmm. They are the most vulnerable in pregnancy and labor. Mm -hmm. And they're just being a number their number on the on the screens. You're right. <laughs> right. Um so what is your focus? My focus is giving as much education, information to moms, people who want to be moms, people who have women in their family and want them to just have a good labor experience, be not have that postpartum depression, not have those issues of anxiety and not being able to breastfeed or ha reach your goals in motherhood and feeling like you've failed right. for a better word mm -hmm. you know we're not failures as mm -mm. mothers and no. no matter what choices you end up making you want to feel like you were made that choice and it wasn't made for you right so having that support and even just i just i teach my classes so even if you don't want a doula or you're not pregnant you just want to educate yourself and help somebody you can come learn reach out to me and just get some information to pass it on and help everybody right who are you trying to reach uh everybody 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 who knows somebody with a uterus with, that which can means have everybody. babies <laughs> yeah so yeah everybody um I have a scholarship program for my doula clients, for families who, even though Medicaid is now covering doula care, even if you don't have Medicaid and it doesn't fit to your family's needs, um, a doula is incredibly beneficial. So just having a program where I can offer reduced price doula care for people who are interested in having a doula, having that support. Mm -hmm is something I'm passionate about and happy I can offer. So yeah, anybody who knows somebody with a uterus, I accept donations for my doula scholarship program and it just helps me to keep giving back. So if you want to help, help, or if you want care, reach out. <laughs> okay. What makes your work different than other similar serving organizations? Um, so having a doula, the studies are absolutely amazing. Um, it's better than just having a midwife or OB care. Uh, having a doula can result in 25% shorter labors, mm. um, a 60% redu reduction in epidural requests, which for somebody who doesn't want that in the first place, that's wonderful mm -hmm. to know that you're supported in not having that. 50% uh, reduction in the rate of cesareans. Wow. So it can help in just knowing and being able to change positionings, help work with babies. Doulas are there for it all. They are trained to help in positioning for you, helping maintain your body, your heart rate, your blood pressure. Also with baby, if baby's experiencing some stress and stuff, mm -hmm. doulas can help with changes in positions to get baby moving and back on the right track. And just ultimately give you a little more confidence in knowing your body knows what it's doing. Because um, each, I've had two, and each time they, it was different. Yes. So just going in and being like, I've done this before, 
whatever. Like my mom had four, and then you know all the grandkids or whatever, and they're all they're all different. Yes. So just having just walking in, like yeah, I, I don't understand what my body is saying or what baby needs because it's not something that we just yeah know. So that's great to have the education about that. Yes, and there's a serious, I mean, postpartum or prenatal appointments. Mm-hmm. It's you're in there. You talk to the doctor. They say, "Do you have any questions?" And you kind of give them some that you I don't might know have. What I don't know. And you don't know. <laughs> and there's no information mm-hmm. on what you can do to help your body. What right. exercises you can do to prepare your pelvic floor for labor, to make your labor pain free and fast. They don't tell you that right. because well, all... and that helps in recovery afterwards yes. too. Yes. So yeah, recovering. Yeah. Postpartum, prenatal. So Mm -hmm. it just everything. Doula care is so encompassing that it helps for everything, not just labor. Yeah. Or hours. People are like, oh, I have plenty of support for my birth in labor. And I'm like, great. Yes and no. (laughs) But you could use help before, after. Mm -hmm. I have packages even for just prenatal just postpartum prenatal and postpartum or the whole thing Mm -hmm. just anything because it helps um there's a 40 percent reduction in the use of forceps or vacuums in delivery with a doula part of it is also with the different positions and just knowing what to do not necessarily having the mom just lay on her back and be coached to, to and told how to do it more of letting the moms listen to their body and not force the baby out mm-hmm. let her body and her baby work in unison like it's to, supposed to yes <laughs> like it's supposed to and f- there's a 30 percent reduction in pitocin for inductions and postpartum just overall my biggest thing about pitocin is they don't tell you that even if you haven't had a c-section before or anything is one of the biggest risks well one of the risks is uterine rupture for pitocin because you're making your body do something it's not quite ready for right so it's forcing contractions and it could possibly cause a uterine rupture Mm. and That's a really big risk, and they don't tell you. Mm. I've never heard of that before. Yes. Mm. So it makes me really sad, but that's why I am doing what I do Mm. and providing. I provide so much postpartum and prenatal support. I provide six appointments prenatal and six postpartum appointments to make sure that my families have all of the information they need. They feel fully supported and ready that if they end up at the hospital before their doula makes it there, they're advocating for themselves. Right. Dad knows what to do. Right. So it's not just mom. Yeah, so it's it's not just mom. That's everybody. This is a whole family thing. And then they're on the same page. Yes. Because you go in and maybe mom says, well, we've always done it this way and maybe she doesn't want to and she's just scared to do it. But if you have somebody on your team, yes. that's it's just having that backup when you're in the most stressful time of your life. <laughs> yes. And you know everybody is on the same team. Right. You know, I get the whole family involved. Anybody who you want to support you in your birth, in your labor, in your world, mm-hmm. I bring them in. We're going to map out your dream birth and we're going to make it happen. Even if things change, you're going to know what's changing and you're going to be in control of that decision. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just going to be, okay, well, why don't you just do an epidural? Right. Just do an <laughs> epidural. That's so much easier, right? right? But is it? Is it? So, yeah, my, my dad has said this is like, it's hard. That they're, they're hard choices, right? And either yes. way, it's going to be hard. Like, once the baby's involved, like, once once the baby's involved, there's no easy way yes. to do this. Um, either, you know, you, you do an epidural and it's and it's easy, but then it's probably harder on your body in yes. recovery and getting back and, and everything, too. Yes, and especially because now the epidural is a uh, opiate-based mm-hmm. Um, injection that 
it alters i mean opiates alter your brain yeah. so you're in labor you're already in a induced drug induced in your own pitocin oxytocin in right. your brain right and then you throw in other drugs and opiates mm-hmm. that when you have your baby there's no you're not in yourself you're not present and there's no connection and it can take a long time to actually feel that connection with your baby postpartum, right. Right. especially after an epidural. Mm, I never thought of that. Yeah. Mm. That's why there's so many moms that are like, I didn't feel a connection to my baby for a long time. Or I just didn't know what happened because they put my baby on my chest and I was like, what the f- <laughs> freak is this? I was like, no. Why? Right. And so it just... Mm. Causes a lot of issues that people don't know about and aren't able to make the educated decision on if this is something. Right. And it happens so fast. Yeah. That you just don't. Yeah. It's a whirlwind. Yes. And it just all gets thrown at you. So if you're prepared going into it, it doesn't get thrown at you. Right. No, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so what are your greatest needs? Uh, my greatest needs just passing the word, Mm -hmm. getting more people out there, asking questions, reaching out and saying, well, I know this person that's pregnant, but I don't know what kind of information I can give them. Just reach out. You know, I love passing on information. So that's my greatest need is just people who want the information and want the help to reach out. Or even if you have any curiosity about it. I love taking on baby doulas. I love helping more birth workers get into the birth community. So from anything. (laughs) That's great. So do you have any events coming up? So monthly on the third Thursday of every month, I have a natural birth class that I teach at the Mercantile in Mead, Colorado. Um, It's from 4 to 7 p.m. We If we have enough signups, I get it fully catered. So it's dinner, the whole family. It's $30 a family. So whoever you want to bring. That's cheaper than going to Wendy's for the family. Yeah. (laughs) You get dinner. And it's more about building a community Mm -hmm. of people who are interested in having a natural birth but want education on it, have questions that they don't know that they can ask. And sometimes having more people around that have the same questions, we're all going to be like, oh, wait, I have this question now. I have this question now. So I teach this class just to encourage more community around birth, more conversations around birth, and more education in an accessible way that's not $300 plus like most birth classes. Mm -hmm. And you get a day in a classroom with a couple other people and you don't really, you go home and you're like, okay, I got this information, but now I have more questions. Right. So now I do this once a month so you can come back. Also, I'm in the works of a class in end of February, beginning of March for not just pregnancy, but all around surviving womanhood in sort of like, you know, grid down situations, just any sort of just caring for yourself and having the education on if I break down on the side of the road and I have this pregnant person who's in labor, what do I do? You know, (laughs) just random. A mini feminine quick class. (laughs) Yes, some feminine care Mm -hmm. for just situations that we might not be ready for. A lot of people, I know a lot of preppers, and prepping is very manly oriented. And so this is kind of like a womanly focus on some woman stuff that gets forgotten in prepping. So it's kind of a fun class. We're planning that. Awesome. Um, But, yeah, those are it right now. (laughs) Um, So how can people contact and find out more about um, Keely Beck's doula and postpartum services? So I'm on Facebook and Instagram as... Quebec Doula. Um, I also have a website, quebecdoula.com, and my email, keely at quebecdoula.com. 
all the same thing across everything. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, I like it that way. Yeah. I used to not like being big on social media, easy to find. But I I'm hear like, that. <laughs> anybody can reach out. I like answering questions, and I'm not going to just try to sell mm-hmm. a whole package. Like, just come to the class. That's it. Just learn something. Just come Just learn. Just get some education. Yeah. Learn some jargon. Yes. You know, like that's what I find is I, I love just learning, learning the terms and like, what does that mean? Yes. And then making, you know, so, so that way people, you just understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you hear people talking about some crazy thing that happened, you can be like, oh, I know about this and, right. you know, can kind of understand yeah. more of how things happen, how people's birth experiences happen. Yeah. And I think the education on it can also help others to understand and have some more empathy for what moms go through postpartum and maybe show up a little more. Instead of, oh, you're to get a day at the spa at the hospital. Yeah. And you just have to lay there and you're like, no, it's I'm great being... when you get to sleep and no. No, you're being poked and prodded every hour. And it's the most know. uncomfortable, uncertain time of your life. Yes. <laughs> Nobody's there. Yeah. So just, yeah, I want people to show up more. That's great. No, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, of course, all this information will be in the show notes, as always, and she'll be in my QR code, so you'll be able to find her there. Um, is there anything else you would like to add to the conversation, something that you're just passionate about that maybe I missed in the questions or just that you're just like, oh, I really want to talk about this for a couple minutes? Um, oh, gosh. And I have so much good information, so. <laughs> my first thing I want to jump to is, like, nuchal cords and the cords around the neck okay because that's one of my biggest things that everybody's like oh my baby's cord was wrapped around its neck and it almost died and i'm like but babies do that naturally and it's like really a magical thing as to why babies do it and so that's the first thing i jumped through oh (laughs) interesting um but yeah so they're covered in almost the same vernix that Babies are covered in the mucus. Mm -hmm. The umbilical cord is covered in the same umbilical cords. The babies will wrap it around their neck in labor to help if they have a long umbilical cord to help the umbilical cord from going into the birth canal before baby's head. Because if the umbilical cord goes Mm -hmm. first, then that's a problem because baby's head can be pushing against the umbilical cord, cutting off the blood supply. But if it's wrapped around its neck, it can't be compressed on it can't be the circulation can't cut off and you're not cutting off your baby's airways your baby's not suffocating interesting because they're connected to the umbilical cord yes their blood and their oxygen and right everything comes from that umbilical cord so lifeline yes, yes it's not in their neck they're okay they do it naturally and even if the umbilical cord were to not you could quite literally slide that knot up and down the umbilical cord because it won't compress on itself because of that jelly that right. it's made of so it's kind of just a fun fun fact i like to share interesting of your baby can't actually it's a safety thing it does on its own and it does it for its own safety reasons it's beautiful. Amazing. So cool. See, I never knew that. Yeah. That's something that I would never. Wow. Yeah. I always thought that was a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> and they do. They make it sound like it's a bad thing. And so I'm really passionate about it because I'm like, it's not. No, 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 no. Mm. Your baby was fine. Please don't freak out because a lot of women have that story and it's really traumatic for them. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's painful to hear like, oh, your baby's cord is wrapped around its neck. We have to do an emergency C-section. They'll die. Right. But they won't because of the way they're connected to the umbilical cord. Interesting. I want, now I'm like, what is the research on that of why yeah. that is such a practice? A lot of times hospitals do a lot of things because of slight possible risks. They right. more make a lot of choices just to cover their butts. You know, in a monetized industry like that, it's all through insurance. They don't want to be sued. So they make a lot of choices that just 
to cover the interests of the hospital, which sometimes doesn't always serve the best interests of the moms hmm. and natural birth. It seems like an oxymoron to me. It kind of is. <laughs> but, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. And it's the day and age. Hospitals do have their place. Absolutely. No, I absolutely. If I'm breaking my leg or yes. my arm, I'm there. If it's an emergency, I'm there. For but birth? For care? I'm like, you don't need them. Yeah. You can have a midwife. You can have a doula. And you can do it undisturbed in your own home. Have your baby go to bed. Yeah. You know, be that's home. Just if you feel comfortable if, with it. Yeah. yeah. If yeah, that's absolutely. what you want. But a lot of people just don't. They don't know there's that, no. even that option. Yeah. Even this for me, my first. Is. I was like, oh, I have to go to a hospital. Right. And that was just three and a half years ago i'm sure there's exceptions of if you have high yes. risk if they're you know obviously but then even having a doula yes is probably even more important in a in a more high risk pregnancy it's probably even more important to have a doula just for information and support yes because you are high risk therefore you're more scared you have more anxiety yes. more questions more things to do as you're Yes. As you're going through your nine months. Yes. I, as a doula, also, I attend high risk hospital births. Um, it is absolutely more important almost if you are high risk mm -hmm. just to have that extra support in whatever terms make it high risk. Right. To have that support and education, somebody who knows more of the research on it so you don't have to stress yourself about all of the research right and then trying to remember it as yes mm -hmm. and know what to ask your doctors about what sort of interventions might come from this sort of high risk uh, i had clients who had uterine didelphus which is two uterus two cervix oh, wow. kind of special situations um i had a client with iugr which is interuterine growth restriction so baby was just measuring a little smaller mom had to end up being induced because baby was small and so just providing that support and education when you find out those sort of crazy things mm -hmm. like oh my gosh my baby's too small and freaking out, whereas having a doula, you can say, this is what they gave me. And the doula can say, okay, here's what we can kind of do. You know, they're watching it. That's what doctors and high-risk appointments are for if you are high-risk mm -hmm. to watch those things yeah. and keep an eye on it. And then the doula can help you with your mental stuff and helping prepare for early inductions mm -hmm. and things like that just to put your minds at ease. Right. Exactly. We have too much to stress about with babies. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that it's just the mis miseducation or lack thereof. Yeah. And so that would make it a whole lot, you know, a whole less stressful just having information. So that's yeah. great. Information and support. Somebody you can reach out to and just say, hey, this weird thing is happening because... Sometimes you can't always get a hold of your midwife or the hospital or the OB. And sometimes Google makes it worse. Yes. <laughs> Google doesn't always help. <laughs> makes it a little scarier, in fact. So it's nice to have doulas and people that you can reach out to and be like, I got this question. Yeah. No, so that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Keely, for being on the show today. Yes. And thank you for what you're doing in the community. I think that's amazing. Um, yeah. Just, just education man uh, time and time again people come on here and i'm just like oh just get educated about this topic and um just the, the stigma around it and just jargon so well you understand what you're talking about yeah instead of being that echo chamber of misinformation um i'm, I'm huge on that it just it just drives me crazy yes um just you know know what you're talking about and not just well i heard on something no Get educated. Yeah. Um, if you hear something, do some digging on it. Yeah. Learn about it because that's how you really are going to strengthen your community is yes. by actually being of real service instead of just faking it along <laughs> yeah. the way. Um, just so pushing yeah. out the common. Yeah, exactly. Fat, whatever just you keeping heard. Keeping it going. Like, yeah. Let's, let's stop it. So, <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank you so much for being on Thank today. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to my guests, my listeners, and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe, 
do all those other things. You know you got to do them because that's the easiest way that you can serve right now. All right, now go. Connect with others and be a blessing.